what's going on in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make some pretty cool animations so if we tap on the Goomba it does that and if we hit spacebar he does a little jump now these are very simplistic animations you can take animations very far but this video is just acting as a springboard for you before we start I want to make a disclaimer that if you're learning how to make animations if you don't learn it on the first time that is completely normal because when I was learning how to make animations I had to watch the same video probably like five times every time I tried to make another animation I would forget something so enough talking let's jump into it alright so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an empty game object I'm gonna call it Goompa because that's what I'm gonna animate today and make sure to reset the transform for good practice now I'm going to go into the Goompa and onto the Goompa, I'm going to create a 2D object sprite. And now this is our actual Goompa. I'm going to rename this Goompa body. And if you're wondering, why do we need to make a parent for the Goompa body? It's because whenever you make an animation on the parent object, then you cannot change the position of the animation. So say if I just made a 2D sprite real quick and made a Goompa and if I was animating the object and I was animating it right here and then when I wanted to play the game I placed them like say right here on the ground and if you animated the parent then it would snap back to that position and start animating. So this is why we create a parent object for the animation. So now for the Goompa body I'll simply drag in the Goompa sprite and bump up the order and layer so we can see him. Bring him to the ground. And now I make an animation for him. So I'm going to go into my assets folder real quick and create a folder to hold all my animations. So I'll call it animations. And now if you do not have an animation window, then you simply go into window and under animation, select animation. And that'll bring up the animation window for you. So pressing on Goompa body, press onto the animation window and if you press create then it'll ask you to create a file and I'm gonna call this animation Goompa press because that's the animation I'm going to make I'm gonna make sure I put it in animations and now everything is set up to animate now this samples right here is your frames per second I'm just gonna drop that down to 30 and to start animating you just have to press record and any changes you make to the Goompa body will be recorded but no changes will take place on the actual body. So I'm gonna jump to frame two, and maybe change the scale to 0.8, copy that on the Y. Same thing on frame four, I'll change the scale to maybe 1.2, same for the Y. And make sure that the last frame is the same as the first frame or else you'll get something that looks like this. Okay, that's not a great example, but it won't be smooth. So now I'm going to go onto my seventh frame and return his position back to normal. And let's just see how this looks. There you go, that's my press animation. That's it for my animation, stop recording. And now I want to make another animation and it's gonna be an animation where he just turns red if I hit spacebar. So go under this tab right here and under this tab, create new clip. And it's gonna ask you to make another animation. I'm gonna call this Goompa red and go ahead and save that up change the samples to 30 frames per second again all right so now let's hit record maybe go to frame four change this color to completely red go into frame eight make sure his color is still completely red and then maybe on frame 15 he will return back to his normal color again mentioning that the first and last frame needs to be exactly the same stop recording hit play and that's all. Now these are very simple and short animations. And this is just a springboard for you to explore the whole animation deal here in Unity. And you can also change the position of the Goompa. So we can make it look like he's jumping. So on frame four, we can say hit record and drop him down a little, Look, make it look like he's about to plant for a jump. On frame eight, he gets way up and then on frame 10 he brings back down plants way into the ground and comes right back up now let's see how this looks it might look very terrible oh it looks all right anyways yeah you can see how easy it is to make an animation 
and it is quite fun to make animations in Unity. You can make some pretty crazy stuff with it. This is just the beginning of it. All right, so now that you have your animations, what you want to do is go into your animator window and mess with the animations there. And if you do not have your animator window, again, go into window and go under animation and select animator. And that will bring up your animator window. And now make sure that the whole time you're making these animations, it was on the Goomba body, not the parent. And whenever you hit create, it will always create an animator component on your game object for you. So if we go into my Goomba body here, you will see that I have an animator component, yet I never added it myself. It just makes animating that much easier. Now, like I said, let's hop into the animator window. And as you can see, we already have two states in here. These were automatically added when we made them. So we have a press state and a red state. So what we want to do is we want to make a empty state. I'm going to rename this to default state. And as you can see, there's this entry state. This is basically the animation that's going to take place at the start of the game. So on the start, it's going to show Goomba press. I don't want that. So I'm just going to set this state to the default state, which has no animation. Now we need to make some transitions. Tap on my default state and make a transition to Goomba press and back from Goomba press. Same thing for Goomba red from default state back to default state. And now we need some triggers to take place for these to happen. And we do this in the parameters tab. Make sure you press onto parameters and press the plus button over here and then select trigger here. Now you can use bool or float. I'm going to be using trigger. I'm going to call this trigger press. I'm going to make another trigger and it's going to be called red to turn the Goomba red. Now if I go to the default state that's transitioning to Goomba press, I need to tap on this transition and add a condition. And the condition automatically puts in press for me. That's neat. And here we have some settings up here. Now when we're transitioning into a state, I most likely don't want exit time, so I'll just turn that off so it happens instantly. And same thing for transition duration. I want it to happen instantly. However, when we are going back, we want exit time, but we want zero exit time. So it happens instantly after the animation is done. And you can set transition duration for any um, transitions that you want in your game. In my case, I have none. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing for the Goomba red animation. So no exit time, transition duration zero add a condition and the condition this time is red and by the way on the going back transition we don't need a condition because has exit time will be on and the exit time will be zero and the transition duration will also be zero and that's it we are done configuring our animator now all we need to do is make a script to trigger these animations and that is simple. Press onto my Goomba body and I'll go ahead and add a component and I'll add a script called Goomba. Feel free to call it whatever you want. And before we open this up, make sure that you put the script onto the object that has the animator component onto it. So now open up Goomba and the only thing we will need for now is the start method. And now for one variable up here, we will need to cache our animator, which is just a git component. So animator, and I'll call it my animator. And on void start, I'll just say my animator is equal to git component. Again, the component that is on the game object, and we are getting the animator. And now we need to check if we press on the object, we do the press animation. And to do this, we need to make a private void on mouse down. Now this is a callback method. You can't call it whatever you want. And on mouse down requires your game object to have a box collider. If it doesn't have a box collider, it will not detect a click. So we need to add that box collider 2D. And I'll probably just shape that real quick. Nothing too fancy. There you go. Now keep in mind that this is a sprite. It is not a UI element. You cannot do on mouse down on UI elements. It could only be on sprites. So if you have trouble with on mouse down, that is why. Now on mouse down, we say my animator dot set trigger. 
And now set trigger requires us to call for a string. And the string we want to set in here is called press. Now, if you spell this incorrectly, it will not find the trigger, which is pretty dumb. I don't know why Unity has it like this. I don't know a better way of calling a trigger, but the way I do it is I make a constant string and constant just means that the string does not change. And I'll call this press animation and it'll be equal to a string name. And before I go fetch that string, I'll just copy this line for the red animation. Now, just to be safe, I'll jump back into Unity, go to my animator, copy the press trigger name, paste it into here, and I'll do the same thing for red. Copy, paste. There you go. Now we know that it is correct. But now how do we call these strings? Well, you just simply feed the string exactly the same way. So press animation, and that's it. Now we want to check if the player hits spacebar. To do that, we'll go private void update, and then we need to check for input. So say if input dot get key down and the key code that we're looking for is key code dot space drop my brackets when we hit spacebar we say my animator dot again set trigger and if you were to set a bool you would simply say set bool that is not our case so set trigger is red animation And that's it. Jump back into Unity. Hit play. Now if I press on my Goomba, it's going to show this little animation. And if I hit spacebar, he does that. Awesome. Now, like I said, animations can be really complex, so you can take them really, really far. This is just the simplest of the simplest. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it helped you guys out, consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.